you and happy Friday. I'm Kristen Welker in Washington today for Andrea Mitchell. In just under an hour, the Clinton Presidential Library will begin to release 33,000 pages of records that were withheld until last year because of legal provisions. The records are expected to include memos to then President Bill Clinton from his advisors and perhaps memos from the First Lady's office. So what will these papers tell us as Hillary Clinton decides whether or not to run in 2016? Joining me now, Chris Saliza, MSNBC. NBC contributor and managing editor of PostPolitics.com and Susan Page, Washington bureau chief for USA Today. Thanks both for being here. Chris, let me start with you. Sure. What don't we know yet about the Clintons that these papers might reveal? <laughs> well, you know, I feel like we don't know what we don't know, Kristen. Mm -hmm. One thing I think that's important is to put this in context. So we've recently had the release of lots of documents related to a closed investigation with Scott Walker in Wisconsin. We've had a lot of documents and we'll have more documents released in relation to Chris Christie's administration, the closing of uh, some uh, lanes in Fort Lee, New Jersey. This is, these are not documents related to a specific event. These are documents from the years that the Clintons were in the White House. So that does it. What we don't know is whether anything new will be there. This is not related to a specific question, a scandal, anything like that. It's simply documents. And as you mentioned at the top, it's 33,000 pages of documents released over a two week period. So we don't know what's good until we are interesting, until we see something good or interesting that we didn't know before, because we just don't know exactly what's contained therein. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to wait and see. Susan, what will you be looking for in these documents and what could be damaging? I mean, you heard Chris bring up the Walker emails and, of course, uh, the Chris Christie documents. What are you going to be looking for? Well, first of all, I would say in 33,000 pages, we're going to find some <laughs> things that are interesting, especially right. yeah. when the topic is Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton. Right. There's no question in my mind that we're going to find some things that we did not expect. Um, and, of course, we'll be looking for, I think, the number one thing we'll be looking for is what was Hillary Clinton advising her? Her husband and the president do mm. think of the think of the journey that Hillary Clinton has taken since those days when she was the first lady of the, of the United States before she became a U.S. senator and a secretary of state and now a leading contender to be president. She may have made, made advice at that point that she would disagree with now that would look naive or look unwise or look uh, unpolitically wise. Um, and so I think that I think it is a glimpse into uh, a piece of Hillary Clinton's mind that we haven't seen yet. I expect it, I expect it to be interesting. Will there be something? explosive, um, maybe maybe not, but definitely going to be worth reading. It's also a potential precursor for what we're going to see in terms of the 2016 debate if Hillary Clinton does decide to throw her hat into the ring, right? There's going to be a lot of relitigation of the Clinton presidency. Right. Bill Clinton, an asset and a liability for Hillary Clinton. Uh, there are lots of good things associated with his presidency. We saw just this week how effective he is on the campaign stump when he was in Kentucky for Allison Grimes. Uh, but, you know, it's problems in that presidency famously uh, that she'll also be having, being forced to deal with. And speaking of re litigating the Clinton presidency. Let's turn to the Tea Party. Uh, interesting things coming on the fifth anniversary of the Tea Party. Chris, I want to ask you, uh, our sure. latest NBC News Wall Street Journal poll shows as the Tea Party turns five, support is pretty low. 24% say they support the Tea Party movement. 65% say they do not support it. The highest, we should say, uh, of the support it's ever gotten has been 30%. But what does this right. say about how strong this party is and about the potential future of the Tea Party. Well, so I think, Chris, as you mentioned, the highest support has ever been is 30%. So 24%, while not great, it's not exactly a massive drop in Tea Party support. I think this was always a niche appeal and niche group. Now, I would say, just because of niche appeal and niche group doesn't mean that the Tea Party doesn't retain power. We saw in the 2010 election very clearly uh, that the Tea Party does retain power. They beat several. Uh, Mike Castle, a sitting Republican member of Congress running for the Senate in Delaware, lost to Christine O'Donnell. Sharon Engel wound up winning a primary. Joe Miller in Alaska won a primary, though he lost the general election. Less so in 2012, although we did see Dick Lugar uh, lose, a sort of establishment Republican, lose a primary. We'll see about 2014. Today 
date, it seems to me the Tea Party aligned candidates, particularly running for the Senate, have stumbled. Uh, we've seen problems for Milton Wolf, uh, problems for Matt Bevin, who's running against Mitch McConnell. So we'll see how it weathers. But I would say just because it's a small number of people in the general electorate who say they support the Tea Party doesn't mean that the Tea Party cannot still have influence in Republican primaries. And if they have influence there, then they're still uh, someone that the Republican Party has to sort of be aware of and uh, acknowledge. And, and two strong leaders within that party, Ted Cruz, Rand Paul. Rand Paul, of course, has been the person who has brought up uh, the Clinton presidency. Let's take a look at what one Democratic PAC is running, this ad that they're adding, really attacking that strategy. And then, Susan, I want to get your reaction on the other side. Rand Paul is out there. He's banging on the Clintons every day. Now, what's his strategy? Yeah. Well, I'm not sure he has a strategy. There's a lot of things going on right now that we need to be concerned about other than what happened 15 years ago. The record is what will be judged upon. It's not a long-term winning strategy for Republicans. I mean, let's all go back and dance the Macarena and talk about 1998. So Susan Rand Paul is saying that the Tea Party needs to invite more people uh, into its uh, umbrella and yet getting criticized for bringing up the Clinton presidency. Right. I mean, he, he has made those those um, kind of provocative comments calling President Clinton a sexual predator. On the other hand, he has been the most interesting, I think, of the Tea Party senators that we saw emerge since 2010 in that he has actually broadened uh, his appeal significantly. He's done some interesting uh, work with Democrats on some issues. I mean, prison prison uh, reform, for instance, restoring voting rights to felons. Um, he's, he's formed alliances with Democrats on that. He's, he's I think, emerged as a, a figure with some appeal. And I think that's why this Democratic PAC is going after him instead of going after, say, mm. Marco Rubio or going after Ted Cruz more directly. I think Rand Paul is the one that seems to have the potential to have an appeal beyond the bounds of the Tea Party. Okay. Yeah, we'll you, be you don't act uh, just Kristen. You don't act. Yes. You don't you don't attack people who are irrelevant. I think Susan's exactly right. All right. Well, thanks to both of you for your you. insights. We appreciate it.